Okay. So I'm recording this session para sa mga again hindi makakasama today no. And thank you for coming in today. Shout out kay Calvin, Nathan and Shane for coming in. All right. So uh let's begin no. So um we'll talk about enthalpy muna today. And I'm thinking na next week kasi mag-ano tayo no. I will have our first F2F na discussion, focus group discussion, and it's all about enthalpy as well. No? So we, we'll do the basics first dito sa session na to, and yung mga advanced calculations gagawin natin sa, during the focus group discussion. So just to give you a preview of how the focus group discussions will be done, we'll be giving you lat uh lat kayo bibigyan namin ng worksheets, and those worksheets will be I don't know. Uh, it will have a difficult questions and we'll walk through the questions together. No? So we'll be showing you the answers and um, kumbaga parang guided problem solving siya in a way. No? So parang ganun yung gagawin natin so that you'll have a feel of how you, you actually do uh, enthalpy calculations when doing it in a parang sit-in exam environment. No? So uh, we think it, it, it could be very helpful no? Uh, especially um kasi parang puro remote lang yung ano natin uh, setting ngayon baka medyo nakalimutan na natin kung paano mag um mag gumawa ng sit in exams no? okay so uh let's start with the basics first what is enthalpy um i leave this first part to you guys no kaya na bala mag uh, uh basa niyan yung how we end up with this equation uh, essentially, we end up with uh, delta H is equal to Q sub P. No? Uh, what this is saying is that the enthalpy natin or the change in enthalpy um, can be uh, interpreted as just the heat generated or absorbed by a system when it undergoes a certain na, na process. No? Right? So, uh, kaya siya may P dito because uh, this signifies that the heat associated with that system change, no? is done at constant pressure which is uh okay lang din naman and it's convenient for us because most systems um are done at atmospheric pressure no which is which can be considered as a uh, constant pressure okay so uh in general there are i don't know three types of enthalpy change we have your heat of formation then we will have your heat of transformation and you have your heat of reactions okay so the heat of formation this is your first type is is a enthalpy change that is associated with the formation of a compound from its constituent elements. No? So when a um, compound is, is created, it needs energy or it, it, depending on uh, I don't know uh, on the compound itself, but most compounds it needs energy to create those bonds. Okay, so, and in the same way, if you break those bonds, then you release energy. Okay, so uh, let, let's say, for example, you have, um, you have, let's say, a compound like uh, O2, which is oxygen, two oxygen uh, atoms now that are combining to form your oxygen molecule, then you need a uh, certain amount of energy to uh, create those bonds. Okay. Now, when you have a standard, uh, when you have a an element that is stable and it is cons constituted with uh, only one um, one element, then we can consider the heat of formation of that particular element as uh, zero, no, at two ninety eight degrees uh, Kelvin. So um, usually when we calculate for the heat of formations, no, um, nakikita natin to in in standard tables, no. So let me, and these are just some of the examples, no. Uh, this is another example. Ito, this is uh, graphite is has zero Kelvin na na associated heat of formation because the stable form of carbon at the 298 is uh, your graphite whereas for example if you have diamond diamond is also a um a form of carbon no and that form of carbon only exists at high pressures and high temperatures no and therefore you diamond form ni ano ni 
ni carbon will not uh, have a uh, enthalpy change uh, so uh, enthalpy of formation um <clears throat> that is zero so there it will have a certain value no then you have your also water water is made up of uh h2 h2o no so there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen molecule uh, one oxygen atom therefore there is an associated na uh, uh, heat of formation in, in creating that. We have also rust, F plus is Fe2O3, same concept applies, and you have also SiO2. So what you'll notice here is the easier it is to break the bonds, the greater, uh, the easier it is to break the bonds, the less uh, the absolute value of the of the heat of formation is. So for example, see water, madali lang i-break yung bonds. Uh, and usually if you learn from Nag, ano na kayo na ngayon, no? nag 17 uh, nag 143 kayo ngayon. So hopefully you've already learned in 143 no na usually uh, the strength of a material, yung overall strength niya is associated with chemical bonding no. So the greater the chemical bonding, the higher the uh, uh, the strength of a material. So you can all, all almost estimate no just by looking at how strong a material is one of magiging associated na uh, na chemical bonding niya and therefore yung associated na heat of formations as well okay so notice how this is water water is not that strong no if you think about it tapos uh, you also have fe2o3 fe2 uh, yung rust is not as strong as say say for example quartz no so you can see that uh, pataas ng pataas yung ano niya yung heat of formations. Although, yung strength naman is just an estimate. Though. There are multiple factors that come into play. No? Like, for example, kung may mga things like uh, in metals, kunwari, may mga strengthening mechanisms pa tayo. Like yung mga precipitation hardening, strain hardening, etc. Et okay. Now, the second type of uh, heat or uh, and and I'm using heat and enthalpy interchangeably dito class no so usually in textbooks interchangeable din naman ang paggamit sa kanya so heat of transformation is the transformation uh, or is the heat associated when we transform from uh, one allotrope of a material to another allotrope no so for example si iron yun yung classic example natin for metals um iron has actually three allotropes no Four dati, pero one is just obsolete na no? So, iron undergoes from, and this is from, I don't know, room temp going to higher temp. So, as you increase temperature. So, it goes from alpha iron, which is the stable na phase, no? So, this is Fe alpha. Tapos, meron kang Fe beta, which is now, uh, we can say na itong Fe beta na to, this is a uh, obsolete na no? Um, na, na form Fe beta is happens at past the Curie temperature, no? Uh, baka madi discuss sa 143. So it has the same form or same crystal structure as alpha. Nagbabago lang yung magnetism niya uh, at a certain point. So I, I think I obsolete na siya. I and hindi nyo na siya nakikita sa mga phase diagram. If you search the phase diagrams for um, iron, hindi nyo makikita tong beta. And kahit sa tables ata, parang, and we can look at the table. No? Let me just check the tables. Uh, enthalpy. So if you look at the enthalpy lesson, merong mga tables ito. Ito, ito yung pinaka ginagamit natin. No? We call this as Schumann tables because it's uh, from a book. Uh, I forgot the name of the book. I always forget the name of the book. Pero the book was... Um, authored by Schumann no? and uh, siya yung main reference natin when it comes to yung mga enthalpy values. No? So let, let's look at iron. Ito alpha to beta and if you look at it, um, if you look at this table, no? ito alpha, beta, gamma. Beta still exists pero if you look at the enthalpy changes that are associated with the transformation of alpha to beta, zero siya actually. No? If you look at it, one four plus one four lang din. So, ibig sabihin, um, changing from alpha to beta does not 
uh, have any enthalpy change. And later, ipapakita ko paano gagamitin itong enthalpy tables. No? Although, I have a video about this. Maybe I could just send it to you guys as well no? para ma-review nyo yung how to properly use the Schumann table. Pero ito, let's compare that with, and notice how also beta to gamma, uh, wala siyang enthalpy change. No? Okay? Ah, no, no, sorry. Uh, if you notice, uh, sorry, this is the temperature pala. So, from because a transformation occurs at one temperature, no? at one specific temperature, dito tayo titingin ng heat. So, if you look at the heat from alpha to beta, walang change. 11,630 naging 11,630 lang din. Pero if you look at the change from beta to gamma, which is 14,360 to 14,740, meron kang associated na enthalpy change, no? which is... Uh, because of that transformation right so uh medyo medyo complex na yun pero yun uh, let me go back to my point no iron has three uh, has four forms and isa again considered as obsolete na it has alpha beta then you have gamma and lastly is the delta no? okay so as you increase the temperature nag-iiba kasi yung form ni um ni iron and when you uh, do enthalpy calculations. So you also need to account for these transformations that later we'll, we'll, I'll show you kung, kung saan siya papasok dun sa equations natin. No? Okay? So heat of transformation usually is expressed as uh, uh, parang ganitong value, no? parang L sub T yung nakalagay. So L here um, is uh, L is uh, stands for the latent heat. No? So ito, latent heat. Okay, so this is a latent heat, and it is solely because of uh, the transformation from one form to another. No, and this does not involve any temperature change because again, um, the temperature or the the formation of this uh, of the uh, of one form to another or one phase to another phase, it occurs at at a constant temperature or at one temperature lang. Okay. So this can also be said for not only um, allotropes, no, but it can also be uh, for different phases in terms of yung states, uh, states of matter. Na, no? So for example, from solid to liquid, meron din siyang associated na uh, latent heat okay, or heat of transformation. So ito, this is transforms from a solid zinc to a liquid zinc. Meron dapat siyang latent heat of melting no so if dito this is l sub t stands for transformation l sub m stands for melting that was you can also see l sub v is vaporization and uh ito, l sub v is vaporization and you have l sub f which is freezing naman okay so you you can um some textbooks medyo ano siya no uh medyo confusing yung yung way of 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 uh showing the the l the latent heat values no hindi nila pinapakita kung positive ba siya or negative it just shows the uh, absolute values so if you are unsure kung positive ba talaga or siya negative or or negative siya you can always think about how creating the phases will impact the i don't know the parang breaking or the formation of those bonds so for example if it's forming from liquid to zinc ito, no? liquid to zinc ah, no sorry liquid is liquid zinc to solid zinc you are actually creating bonds no kasi from the loose liquid structure na loose bonding lang kasi ang liquids no as compared to your solid structures which has which have uh, more rigid na bonding and in in metals it has a crystalline structure no um if you think about it <clears throat> parang nagke-create ka ng uh, new bonds dito or stronger bonds okay so if you create stronger bonds then you need to to absorb energy no tama you need to absorb energy para ma-create yung bonds na yon and therefore dapat negative yung value which makes sense no kasi kung positive siya um, and you learn this from chemistry, meron kasi tinatawag na yung exothermic and yung endothermic na reactions. No? So when we say exothermic reactions, then you are releasing heat. When you say you are have an endothermic reaction, then you are absorbing heat. Right? So dito, 
this is actually a an endothermic na uh, transformation no meaning it needs to absorb heat para makapag-create ng bonds to create z solid zinc whereas dito eh, when it um when it release when it changes from uh, solid zinc to liquid zinc kailangan niya i-break yung bonds na yun no it needs to break those bonds so that it can for form the liquid na state and uh, that involves breaking of those bonds and breaking of those bonds uh, releases the heat that were that were parang quote unquote stored in the uh, bonds itself no so parang i-release niya siya therefore positive yung associated niya na uh, para heat of transformation okay so th that's one way you can predict no kung pagiging positive ba or uh, negative yung isang uh, transformation so sometimes pag binigay sa inyo naka-state siya ng ganito pero minsan pagka binigay siya parang sinabi lang the, the latent uh, heat of transformation for liquid and solid is ganitong value tapos kailangan mong hulaan pero usually naman pinap sinasabi naman explicitly kung kunwari from liquid to solid ibig sabihin nagbabago siya from liquid to solid or solid to liquid tapos binibigay yung negative or positive pero again to double check just think about the bonds no? right next is heat of reactions naman so in heat of reactions <clears throat> um again pagka eto uh maybe this will be confusing no because i've i've stated dito sa case na to na parang eto this is endothermic no na parang kailangan niya magabsorb para mag um uh, kumbaga kailangan niya magabsorb para um ma ma break yung bonds or ma create yung bonds kasi ito kailangan mag release para mano pero when you talk about uh heat of reactions um opposite yung ano no kasi exothermic is given as a negative delta h and endothermic is given as positive delta h so the reason being kasi when we calculate for delta h of reaction eto nandito pala if you calculate for delta h of reaction you compute for products minus reactants all right so if the products is um <clears throat> if the product has a lower uh kumbaga enthalpy value kung mas mababa yung enthalpy dito kumpara sa enthalpy ng reactants then ibig sabihin magne-negative yung value therefore nag-nag-release ka ng heat tama as opposed to endothermic reactions wherein nasa higher enthalpy na uh, higher yung enthalpy content ni products which is again we can consider this this as a final state no and this is the initial state initial okay so if you consider that eto si final state natin is at a higher um enthalpy value than the initial state then we can say na para nag-absorb yung system so kaya uh, baliktad siya as opposed to dito we are talking about um yung yung change niya from this form to this form right here parang ganun siya so uh, i hope that that makes sense um Wait lang, ah. This is uh final and initial pa rin naman to. Wait lang. Baka baliktad ba to? Mm. Sige, let's look at the tables no para to confirm I know tama yon. Uh let's look at the tables transformation from liquid to solid kunwari so let's look at uh, zinc thing natin si zinc no? so zinc as a transformation of from liquid to solid so if you're uh, for etong c c here is your solid this is the crystalline uh, phase, no? Itong C is crystalline, so that is solid. That's itong L is liquid. So if you go from solid to liquid, then 
you have 7, 8, 20 minus 4, 6, 40. That is a positive value. No? So from solid to liquid, it's a positive value. So if you look at here, solid to liquid should be positive. Makes sense, no? Solid to liquid is positive. Then liquid to solid will be, because the final state niya is this one. And this is the initial. So solid minus liquid will be negative. No? So tama naman yung values natin. I'm just uh, wrapping my head around kung bakit siya opposite. Uh, negative. Pero uh, again, uh, it applies no, yung sinabi ko na Again, kasi, kaya, kasi nga nag-absorb siya, ng, kailangan niya mag-absorb ng heat to break those bonds, uh, to, to create those bonds, therefore, negative siya. And eto, kailangan niya mag uh, when you break those bonds, i-release niya yung heat, kaya siya positive. Okay? Um, <clears throat> pero dito, i-disregard nyo na lang yung sinabi ko na yung endothermic and exothermic itong sa parts na to, no? kasi... Uh, maybe that's not the proper term to use when we when we're talking about uh, heats of transformation. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. So uh, disregard yung lang yung statement na yun na I, I talked about this being an endothermic na ano endothermic na heat of transformation. Uh, I think that's not proper. Uh, that's not the proper term to use. No, uh, but the pag uh, ano siya again pag uh, nagbreak tayo ng bonds, it is associated with a negative. Ano, pag nag tayo ng bonds, is, is, is associated with a negative uh, uh, latent heat. Tapos pag uh, nag-create, nag-break tayo ng bonds, it is associated with a positive. Tama ba yung sinabi ko? Parang nabaliktad ko ata. So, pag uh, create ng bonds, associated, associated with a negative uh, latent heat. Pag uh, create naman, it's a uh, break naman, it's uh, positive na, na latent heat. Okay? So anyway, Proceed dito. Um, this is the last type of uh, reaction, no? which is uh, the, the siguro this is the, the hardest part or the most of the calculations will come from. Ito yung heat of uh, reactions. No? And uh, to find this heat of reactions, you and depending on, on what type of reaction you're uh, calculating, you'll probably need heat of transformation and heat of uh, formation as well. No? Definitely, kailangan natin yung heat of formation. Yung heat of transformation, depende na lang kung uh, yung parang sinosolve natin na heat of reaction involves a transformation dun sa temperature range na ina-analyze natin. Okay? So, the heat of transformation, um, again, is just uh, either the enthalpy or uh, the enthalpy absorbed or released when a reactants form a product in a balanced na reaction. No? Um <clears throat> Ito, the delta H of reaction, again, is just given as the uh, delta, the summation of all the delta H's of the products, which is the final state, minus the delta H of formation of the reactants, which is your initial state. Right? So here's a, an example now of how we can solve for um, so delta H of reactions. So let's try to calculate the heat of reaction when limestone is calcined to CaO and COO2 at 298. Uh, and this is done at 298 Kelvin, which means that we can use the standard enthalpies of formation. No? So calcining uh, is just a metallurgical term, no? pero if you want the general chemistry term, this is actually a decomposition reaction no? because it decomposes from a compound, magde-decompose siya into, a, um, into two uh, separate components, no? which in this case are also compounds. No? So we can use uh, Hess's law dito. And Hess's law, you've learned this from, from your from chem your your chem uh, subjects no uh, it's just uh, the the delta h of formation chem 26 sabi ni Shane thank you so from chem 26 you've learned that uh, to get the delta h of reaction you just need uh, the delta h of formations of all the products which in this case is this one minus the delta h of formation of the reactants okay which is in this case ito siya okay 
So this is at 298. So pwede diretso kunin na lang natin from the tables. No? So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if the Schumann table has delta H formation. I think they, it has. No? Wait lang. Ha? Ito na, dito siya. Let me... So ito yung mga delta H of... I don't know, this is specific heat. Delta H of formation. Ito. Meron mga delta H of formation dito. And note sa... Uh, um, since we're using Schumann table most of the time, no? Um, merong isang quirk dito si delta A, uh, si ano si Schumann table. It displays the value as a neg as a negative enthalpy of formation, no? So meaning whatever value you get here, you you have to you have to add a negative uh, na sign before it, right? So if eto lahat ng to di sa roll positive positive na kasulat ito, uh, lalagyan yun ng negative sign before it. So if you have a negative naman dito magiging positive siya pagka sinulat na natin doon sa equation sa atin. Okay? So just remember uh, this quirk uh, from ano no, itong si Schumann table kasi baka makalimutan nyo when you're using Schumann's table. No? Okay? So let's find uh, check double check lang natin kung tama ba tong ano. Uh, that's that's delta H formation ni CO2. So let's just look at as uh, one value no, itong CO2 lang muna. Delta H of formation ng CO2. And again, this is at 298. Uh, CO2 is at 298. CO2, ito. So that's, it has a delta H of formation of 94.05. But this is uh, in, ano ba to? This is stated in Cal per gram small. Okay. Dito siya given as a kilogram um calories per gram mole no or th that's just essentially cal per mole a kilocal per mole so we can also note as kilocal per mole lang din to okay um to obtain kung gusto natin yung ano usually mas familiar tayo sa ano no in in delta h kasi yung delta h yung units na pwede natin gamitin is at least in met 17 it's either cal per mole or uh, naka ano tayo uh, what's the other no i'm trying to remember uh, it's a common unit baka maalala nyo it's a very common unit on the MSG but oh, hindi maalala uh Wait, search na lang natin. Cal, siya yung unang lalabas. Eh. Cal per mole, 2. Ayun, kilojoules. Ba't ko nakalimutan to? So, ayun, eh. so, either cal per mole to kilojoules per mole. So, ito, kilojoules per mole. And to convert this, pwede natin gamitin yung uh, yung gas constant. no? So, if you look at the gas constant, uh, R, if it's in kilocal per mole, naka... Ano ba yung gas constants ng... It's... Ang cal ba ang 0 0.821? Uh, I forget these things, no? Tapos yung isa is 8.314. Which is which? Wait lang. Gas constant. Gas constant R. Uh, nakalagay naman dito. So, si joules pala yung ano. So, 8.314 is the joules. Uh, wait lang, ha? Wiki. So, nandito on the right side, 8.314 is the joules, the cal, where is the cal? Ito cal. And liter atmosphere para yung 0 0.0821. So, hindi natin magagamit yun. Ito yung gagamitin. Ito pala. 1.987. Okay. So, this is... Uh, itong nandito is liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Which is not a common... Ano, no? Itong liter atmosphere kasi is not a common um, measure of energy. Uh, this is joules per mole. And yung isa is 1.9... Ano nga yun? 987. 987. Just to double check, 1.987. Okay? So, 1.987 cal per mole tayo. Okay? So, 
if you want to convert, um, there are converters online, no? Pero um, if you want to just convert this, you can just use the gas console. Kasi ito, ito naman, mostly, uh, this is the equations that we mostly would like to memorize, no? Itong 8.314 and C1.987. So if you want to convert, um, this is kilocal, na kilocal pala to. Although, uh, pag uh, gusto natin in 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 Meti 17, no, and I think in most textbooks, usually nakakal per mole yung ano, tapos kilojoules per mole naman pagka uh, naka delta H siya. So if we convert it, uh, then you just do a ano, no, conversion factor. So if you have, for example, dito, this is, ano ba yung binigay sa handout natin? Ay, ito, sorry. Dito, this is, ah, nakakilokal na pala to. So, no need to convert. So, dito, let's just double check now. CO2 is 94.05. Ano yung nakalagay ko? Delta H for moist one is, ala, baliktad to. 94.0. This is for CO2. And let's just confirm ito for CAO dapat to. Uh, CAO is, if it's correct, CAO. 151.9. Okay, so let's go back. 151.9. So take note na, baka na, nabaliktad ko lang. Uh, this is for CAO and this is for um, CO2. I need to, ano no, kailangan ko i-note pad to para maalala ko yung mga changes na to. This is slide 13. Slide 13. Correction. Okay, so uh, tama naman and you can get CaCO3 again and at the age of formation. Again, because these are just, um, this is done at room temperature, madali lang siya, no? We can just directly uh, do Hess's law. Okay? And feel ko sa Chem 26 nyo, um, lahat naka 298 lang yung reaction, no? So there was no need for you to do elevated temperatures and do the uh, thermal loop, which I will show you later now thermal loop or kirchhoff's loop law okay so another example of uh Hess's law uh ito naman this is a stepwise na reaction no so you are given mn uh you are to find the enthalpy of the following reaction at 298 again very important qualifier to class no itong 298 na to. and at one atmosphere no so it is at uh stp or standard temperature and pressure and MNSIO3 decomposes into MNOS plus SIO2 quartz. Okay. So if you're given this uh, reaction, uh, this is a uh, three stepwise reaction. So then the first thing you need to do is to um, write it as a, a stepwise reaction. No? And you need to um, para manipulate it such that. Uh, the the overall balance equation so yung new OBE natin overall balance equation uh, is um, stated as the same way as the problem no okay so you have uh, MNS plus one half O two yields MNO so pwede nating isulat lang diretso yung associated na uh, delta H of formation niya, which is negative ninety two eto SI SI plus O2, SIO2. Uh, again, this is also stated as is. No? So, ito, diretsa lang din. So, that's negative 210.2. Ito, nakabaliktad siya, tama? So, MN plus SI plus 3O2. Because this is a uh, this is a formation, delta H of formation na, na ano, di ba? Na, na value. Then, therefore, it makes sense na yung product mo is the compound that you are forming. So it is negative 5.9. No? So negative 5.9 and therefore kung babalik tarin natin yung equation and this is what you learn from Chem 26 no? Sa, and this is also based on Hess law. Um, if you reverse the reaction then you also reverse the uh, sign of the enthalpies involved. So that's it, that becomes plus 5.9. Okay? So if we add that all uh, we'll have negative 92, na siya, negative 92 minus 210.2 plus 5.9.
and we should get this value right here itong kilo kala to okay um yung yung ano natin no isa sa kailangan natin take into account dito is um when we also reverse the overall uh, balance na equation um you need to also kung kunwari lang ang hinahanap is baliktad na to you don't need to calculate it again no? pwede namang baliktarin niyo lang din yung sign so if regardless if it's a formation reaction uh, a transformation reaction or a um or or a heat of reaction um the the same law applies no whenever you reverse the reactions magde negative lang din yung values okay so ito na uh, we, this is the part where in we calculate uh, enthalpy when the system is no longer at 298 no because up until now puro examples natin and even sa chem 26 puro examples natin is naka room temperature lang 298 um, but especially for metallurgical reactions no usually nangyayari to at intermediate to high temperatures no um and that is uh, just how um most of the relevant reactions that we are looking at occurs no nandoon talaga sa intermediate to high especially kung pyrometallurgy high temperatures talaga yung dinideal well nyo um even sa physical metallurgy no when we talk about physical metallurgy um if we want some change in the internal structure usually in elevate din natin yung temperature using some form of heat treatment no? so in that sense in metallurgy always we are not doing things at uh, room temperature no we always uh, elevate it okay so eto hindi ko muna hindi ko na explain in great detail so just uh, look at the uh, the i don't know just look at this module right here pero what we end up having is a term known as uh, heat capacity no now this heat capacity um there are many experiments that have already been done and we can actually come up with uh, an empirical an uh, equation no uh, and this empirical equation is given as cp is equal to a plus bt plus c t raised to the negative 2 and this a values b value this a b and c values are all available in tables no? and we can see it in schumann's table if you look at schumann's table you'll see yung mga values na to. so you have a b c and actually it's d because nakadisha because um <clears throat> itong human stable kasi can be expressed as either a pwedeng diretso na heat na ganyan or pwedeng uh cp so delta h kasi is given as uh the integral of uh cpdt no para ganyan so if you integrate this then you get delta h no pero usually ang ginagawa natin we get the cp values tapos kasi di, this is from t to 298 no so we can have different na ano so pwedeng 298 to a certain t pag kinalculate uh, mo pwedeng pwedeng i-evaluate na, na siya dito sa sa given tables na to no, for for quicker na uh, reading pero in in met e17 usually we just take this form right here no and do the evaluations ourselves okay <clears throat> but of course if you want you can also do this no pero ang ang issue lang doon is i think nakakal per mole ba to naka nakakal per mole naman siya so meron lang siya mga weird values din dito na naka yung british units no kunwari to naka BTU per pound mole siya. Uh, this one, tingnan natin, in this equation, T is in Kel Kelvin, um, HT and H298 are cal per mole, and CP is in also in cal per mole. Cal per mole or BTU per pound mole. BTU per pound mole per degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, same lang pala yun. Equivalent lang pala yun. So apparently, cal per mole degrees centigrade is also equivalent to BTU per uh, pound mole. Okay, so ang medyo mahirap lang which needs some conversion is itong HT minus H77 na table na ito. 
which is where we will get our latent heats, no? Tama. Kasi what we do when we use Schumann table, if you if we want to get the latent heat, ima minus kasi natin itong value na to. So if you're transforming from kunwari beta to gamma, gagawin mo is uh, it's final minus initial, no? So kunwari, you want to look for the latent heat of transformation from beta to gamma, then it's your final mo is gamma, so 14, 740 minus yung beta, it's 14,360, which will give you, uh, pero dito naka, itong British units, ano, naka BTU per pound mole, yeah, BTU per pound mole siya which needs some conversion. And uh, I'm not quite sure what the conversion is. BTU per, per mole to KJ per mole. Ano ba yung conversion niya? Ano, BTU per pound mole pala. British, BTU stands for British Thermal Units. So, ito, ito yung conversion niya. It's 1 BTU for parang weird kilojoule per mo. Balik ta rin natin. Kilojoule, search, convert natin to ano. 4.3 times 10 to the 39. Ito, baka, ito yung mas maalala niyo yung value. So, 1 kilojoule per mole is 4.3 times 10 to the 39. I think that's easier to memorize. No? So, ano ulit yun? 1 kilojoule per mole is equivalent to, uh, if you multiply it by, So you multiply it by per mole conversion is 4.3 times 10 to the 39, you know, 39 BTU per pound mole. Okay. So hopefully, kasi kailangan pala natin gamit nito. So baka sa exams, hindi namin in-expect na ma-memorize nyo to, no? We will just give the conversion factors na lang para mas madali siyang i-convert, no? Okay? So, yan. Okay na tayo. So, ano ba sinasabi ko? So, again, at always look at the... When you're looking at tables, no? Any table for that matter, always look at what are the units, kung paano siya um, naka-express, no? Tapos, again, dito, sa case na to, will be... Primarily looking at CP when we're solving for uh, enthalpies of reaction that occur at higher temperatures. Okay? So, ito yung form. This Again, this is an empirical form and several experiments have been done and we thank the experiments, uh, experimenters for that. No, And if you watch the podcast or if you listen to the podcast, actually, si Doc Mena actually has had some interesting thoughts about this empirical equation. No? Parang... Um, this was apparently most of the 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 values na nakuha natin is at the time of war, no, when they were looking for bombs, no, or trying to look for the uh, best chemical reaction to make bombs, no, para ganon. So if you have time, please listen to the podcast, especially yung enthalpy episode na kasi. Fiko madami kayo matutunan kasi ang guest namin nun is si Doc Mena, no. Okay, so uh, eto. Kirvin has a question, no? Need din namin maging mindful sa table kasi po naka-fire na siya. Yes, also, isa din yan sa kailangan yung tingnan, uh, ano no, Kirvin. Kasi naka-Fahrenheit yung mga, yung ilang values dito naka-Fahrenheit, no? Kunwari, itong temperature is in Fahrenheit. So, you need to do some conversion, no? Although, ito naman, itong tables na to, this is just a, ano no, uh, kumbaga, ano, how do I, call this. This is just a table showing the enthalpy of transformation as you um, this is what we call as a sensible heat. No? So 
meron tayong two types of heats kasi we have the sensible heat and we have the latent heat. Okay? So latent heat is when you are, uh, this is the heat that is associated with the change in uh, phase. So a transformation in phase like crystalline to liquid or uh, an, an allotrope change, no? like yung example alpha to beta or alpha to gamma. Ganun. Pero itong sensible heat, this is the um, change associated with uh, a temperature change. No? So as you move uh, from one temperature, for example, from 298 to a higher temperature, like for example, 512, kunwari, then there is heat involved dito, no? Uh, either by the absorption of the, either by the absorption or by the release of heat with the products involved. So, kung ano man yung CP na kinukuha natin ito, yung heat capacity niya. Okay? So, um, for sensible heat, yung si Schumann stable kasi is, it also gives a table, no? Kung, 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 mag, kung baga, ano yung value niya pagka kunwari, nasa 400 ka na. So, from 298 to 400, ano yung value? 600, ano yung value? Etc. Etc. Parang ganun. So, binibigyan niya yan, yan. Although, commonly naman, hindi natin ginagamit to. Kasi, for one, naka Fahrenheit siya. And, for another thing, usually kasi, uh, we are dealing with exact values. no Tapos, yung mga values na kinukuha natin is, uh, requires that we input it in the correct equation. Yung dito sa equation na to. So, most of the time, hindi natin ginagamit talaga. Yung area na to, this one, Pababa, hindi natin ginagamit. The only time that we will be actually using this is if we want to get the uh, latent heat. So we, we can, of course, get it from textbooks, no? Pwede uh, from online references kasi sa online references naman if you search it, kunwari, latent heat of transformation from alpha iron to beta iron. Pag gano'n naman, um, may lalabas naman na results, no? Pero if during the exam, Ito lang kasi yung Schumann table ibibigay namin. So you'll need to do, if it's it's not given in the problem, kailangan nyo siyang hanapin through the use of this ano na, table. So again, the only time na gagamitin natin siya is if you want to look at the transformation, no, which is shown here. Okay? Right. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So balik tayo dito sa ano. Okay, let's go back dito. Okay, so uh, again, in derivation, I leave it to you guys, pero we'll end up with an equation that looks like uh, this, no? Ito yung final equation, form of the equation natin. Ito. So we have the delta H of transformation at the final state minus the delta H of transformation at the initial state uh, is equal to uh, the initial, uh, the um, integral of delta CP dt um, from, taken from the initial state up to the final state. So, ito siya. So, if you rearrange, you'll have something that looks like this. So, if you know, if you want to know the delta H of transformation of a particular reaction uh, at a higher temperature, usually at Itong T final is at a higher temperature. No? Or for that matter, pwede namang hindi. No? Pwede namang at a lower temperature din. It doesn't really matter. So at an, at a temperature, itong TF, this is um, a temperature other than room temperature. Then you can find that as well. no And usually T0 is uh, taken as yung 298. So why do we take it at 298? Because siya yung known values. no Because we already have tables for that. And yun yung uh, kumbaga reference values natin. So parang weird naman na, kunwari, ang ginawa natin, let's just say na if you want to get to t not mo is naglagay ka ng value at 512, tas t final mo nilagay mo at 1,100. Kunwari ganyan. So ito yung hinanap mo. So if you try to input that into this equation, hindi mo actually makukuha siya. No? Kasi you don't know t not at 512. All right? Unless of course, um, binigay ito sa inyo. Uh, you don't know the H not uh, the delta H that is associated with uh, the reaction at 512 because this is at uh, at a non-reference temperature. No? All right. So, kaya if you want to solve this reaction, uh, this equation, kailangan dito yung unknowns mo, dito yung known mo. Uh, CPDT is known, no? Ito, known naman to. So, you input this using the tables. Ito namang initial kailangan known din to para ma-solve mo to. And to 
And the only known values for delta H using just Hess law is yung um, at reference temperature, which is in our case, 298 Kelvin. No? Okay. Uh, the only thing, the only uh, parang way na nakikita ko na ano na magagamit nyo na non-reference yung nakaki, nakasulat dito is for example uh, nakastate na sa problem na kung ano sa problem sinabi ng problem na um, the delta H of reaction pag ganitong temperature at 512 kung ano uh, at 512 is ganitong value say for example gusto nyo erase pa yung uh, temperature to 1100 what is the delta H of reaction associated at 1100. So, in that case, uh, convenient na sa inyo. Pwede hindi na 298 yung kukunin nyo. Diretso 512 kasi binigay naman na eh. So, pwede ganyan. So, um, kasi at 298, magkocalculate ka kasi using yung HES law. No? Yung gagamitin natin ulit yung ginawa natin dito wherein compute natin yung delta H of reaction using HES's law and take the delta H of formation. Okay? So, yun yung isa sa ano, nakikita kong scenario wherein non-298 yung ilalagay nyo dito. Pero again, most of the time, 298 yung ilalagay natin. Alright? So, um, another thing that you need to note when you're using this calculation is that dapat lahat naka-Kelvin. No? So, you can't use this equation if hindi degrees Kelvin yung gamit nyo. Always convert. From the start pa lang, convert nyo na agad yung whatever value usually degree Celsius naman binibigay namin. No? So from degree Celsius, convert nyo agad plus 293 para maging Kelvin siya para hindi, hindi na kayo magkakamali. Uh, I think that's one of the more common errors na ginagawa ng mga students no? when they're solving for mental piece of reactions. Okay? So, um, yung, eto no, uh, this might be confusing to memorize. So, one way to, ano, to uh, especially when you have ano no kasi ito this this um assumes na wala kang um wala kang transformations na nag occur between the t naught between t naught to t final you're assuming na wala kang um wala kang transformations that are occurring with all the species involved pero in most in, in some cases probably most no hindi naman ganun yung case no there might be times wherein may transformation siyang dadaanan let's say for example uh, we are deal dealing with lead no kunwari lead lang may isa sa species is lead tapos we are doing it at 298 or 25 degrees celsius to let's say elevated temperature of 500 degrees celsius okay kunwari ganyan no uh, lead has a melting point of 327 degrees Celsius. no. So meaning, in between sa ina-analyze natin temperature from T0 to T final, 25 to 500, merong transformation that is occurring. And therefore, uh, we need to take account of that transformation. Tama? So, if hindi natin siya tinik into account kasi, <clears throat> mag-iiba yung final answer natin. Right? So, uh, instead of using this equation, we'll use what we call as a thermal loop no or a thermodynamic loop and the thermodynamic loop um, capitalizes on the fact that the change in value of a state function that goes through a loop is equal to zero and you've learned this in ano no in the yung in the thermodynamics process na lecture where in tiningnan natin yung kunwari yung pv diagram if you have a pv diagram that looks like this kunwari Kumari, state 1, tapos pumunta siya dyan, state 2, pumunta sa state 3, kumari, state 4 pataas, tapos bumalik siya sa state 1. You'll notice na the change in energy associated with this looping process is will always equal 0. No? Tama? So, uh, same concept din dito sa, no, sa, sa itong thermodynamic loop na equation. No? So what we are actually trying to do here is we are starting with reactants. Papa move forward natin siya to products which is at 298. I-raise natin yung temperature ng products natin. Okay, so this is a theoretical lang to na ano, no? uh, for calculation purposes. So uh, 
hindi siya actually nangyayari in real life no so pa parang uh, in this is for imagination purposes sa para maka-create tayo ng etong ano no uh, parang equations for the thermodynamic loop so what we are imagining is we start off with um a product uh, uh sorry a reactant that is at 298 ipapag proceed natin siya yung temperature uh, yung yung reaction at 298 so you end up with product at 298 raise natin yung temperature nung products na yon to a, an elevated temperature that is T2 pwedeng raise pwede rin pababa pero that's a more complicated case ipapakita ko na lang siya uh, later on no? uh, and by the way self correcting naman yung lahat ng ano natin no regardless if you go up or you go down self correcting siya because of the integral function no? if you notice di ba pag integral function from T0 to T final if it's positive siya and you go downwards kunwari from T0 to T uh, final 2 and T final 2 is in the opposite direction usually negative yung lalabas na sagot dito so um in that sense hindi nyo kailangan mag-worry as much no parang ano naman mag self correct naman siya if you just uh, input the correct values following the the correct loop no okay so eto um you find ang ginawa natin is we yung yung final product natin at 298 i-raise natin siya to 298 uh, to a uh, value higher than 298 tapos i-reverse natin yung reaction papabalikin natin siya to uh, its reactants at the elevated temperature and again i-bring down natin yung temperature niya at um at the original na 298 degrees kelvin uh, on the reactant side so yung reactants bumalik siya dyan. so given that it undergoes a loop no dapat yung total energy change niya will equal to zero and therefore lahat yung enthalpy change niya will also be equal to zero because enthalpy is a state function no therefore e eh, kung eto meron siyang enthalpy state dito h1 because it undergoes this loop yung delta h niya for the entire loop and let's just call it uh, I forgot the how parang ganito ata yung symbol parang delta H phi yung symbol ng some textbooks some textbooks just have it as delta H thermo TL no for thermodynamic loop uh, ang gamit namin dito is uh, TL no thermodynamic loop but uh, if you look at your reference textbooks baka may makita kayong symbol na ganyan I think this symbol this is phi no this also means uh, thermodynamic loop okay so yung dapat yung thermodynamic loop delta h niya will be equal to zero okay so if you work it out you'll have an equation that looks like this no so usually a thermodynamic loop naman is arbitrary no you can do a loop that is going here but then naman if you feel like it you go uh with a loop that is clockwise naman so it doesn't really matter no you should end up with the same question equation so um to use this loop what we do is Whenever you you your arrows go uh, alongside the loop, then it is uh, given a positive na sign. If it goes against the loop, then it is given a negative sign. Okay. So for example, let's do this. I don't know. So uh, delta H of reaction at two ninety eight is this one. So this is the first na arrow natin. So this is the delta H of reaction at two ninety eight, which is can be found using Hess law. No. So ito siya. So it's a positive value. Positive yan. So next natin is we raise uh, this um by the way uh, before I forget this no enthalpies are um we call them as extensive properties no so uh, since extensive yung enthalpies it means that uh, the amount of material or the amount of the species that undergoes a certain reaction transformation etc will matter no so therefore <clears throat> you will always see in enthalpies of reaction na meron siyang nakakabit parati na ano na number of moles no so always uh, remember this number of moles ito din one of the many things na ano no uh, na, na parati na kalimutan ng students to account for the number of moles so always uh, account for this it's easier no um, yung first few equation kasi na binigay natin is naka 1 mole lang kunwari ito 1 mole lang kasi to so wala tayong multiplication na 
or wala tayong kumbaga minultiply na number of moles pero dapat uh, technically may n pa to dito no n n n n it just so happens na tig 1 mole lang sila so kaya hindi tayo ng multiply by number of moles dito rin um, although there is one half dito but this is the delta h of uh, formation for one mole of MnO2. So, and dito sa reactions na to na ginawa natin sa overall balance equation, naka one mole lang din si MnO. Tama? Since one mole lang siya, therefore, wala tayong minultiply dito sa negative 92. Okay? Pero remember, again, if meron tayong multiplication na gagawin, kuwari, mas maraming number of moles, then we, of course, we have to take to take that into account. No? Okay? <clears throat> so, dito... Um uh, so ito yung ito, this is uh yung delta h of reaction again i was saying na uh, this is along the loop so positive siya this this one nc to ncc so ito this uh species c as you raise it up to a temperature higher um the arrow is going upwards no so meaning itong value na to is along the loop. If you look at the loop, parang it it goes together with the loop. No? So therefore, positive din siya. Itong D uh, also is along. That's why it's positive. Itong delta H of reaction at uh, elevated temperature T, which is what we are actually trying to look for. No? It is going against the loop. Tama? So kaya siya negative dito. Uh, this, NB, uh, this B right here, B species, is also against the loop if our arrow is going up like this. So, negative siya. And yung lastly, negative din siya dito. Okay? But take note, again, the arrows are arbitrary, no? So, say for example, I want the arrows on this side. Kunwari lang, gusto ko na ang arrows dito sa side na to is all going downwards. So, you can do that as well, no? Uh, you can do arrows going downwards para pag ginawa niyo yung loop, positive pa rin siya. So you can do positive dito, positive din dito. So mangyayari is positive 2 and positive 2. That that can be done, no? Pero if you do a arrow going downwards, magbabago din yung limits of integration niyo. So for example, if it's arrow going upwards, it's 298 to uh, temp elevated temperature T. Pero if it's arrow going downwards, so from T, since dito, arrow going downwards siya, no? So, meaning, parang sinasabi mo, ang initial mo na is yung T, ang final mo is 298. So, babalik ta rin mo, 298. And again, yung sinasabi ko kanina, self-correcting siya because, if you remember, pagka ganito, kung T to, uh, 298 to T, this is just equal to the negative of T to 298. So, parang mag self-correct siya, ano siya, no? So, it's all depends on how you, ano yung mas intuitive sa inyo, no? Um, before... I used to do it, I don't know, uh, parang binabaliktad ko yung arrows because I, uh, parang minsan nakakalimutan ko yung mga negatives. Uh, nalilito ako. So, ang ginagawa ko is ina-arrow down ko na lang yung mga reactant side para puro positive yung lalabas. Pwera dito sa uh, mangyayari is eto na lang matitirang negative tapos pag uh, nilipat ko sa kabilang side kasi zero siya, uh, magiging positive na siya. So, I end up with an equation that is all positive lang. So, plus, 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 plus lang lahat. So, I used to do it that way. Um, it seemed more intuitive to me at that time. Pero ngayon, uh, hindi ko na binabaliktad yung arrows. No? Ginagawa ko na lang para less error. I always, now you just use all arrows pointing upwards. Para lahat ng integral ko, it's 298 sa baba. Tapos, uh, whatever ref, uh, temperature I'm I'm analyzing sa taas. Okay? So, but it depends again on you guys, no? You can try it both ways. Tingnan nyo kung ano yung mas intuitive, ano yung mas madali. And uh, you, you can find your own solution. And also, ito din, di din necessary clockwise, no? So, for example, if you do, uh, oh, sorry, counterclockwise, hindi necessary counterclockwise, you can also do a, uh, yung positive nyo is clockwise. So, kung positive clockwise, same rules apply, no? Dapat positive ay uh, yung mga going with the loop, negative is going against the loop. It will always correct itself, no? Okay? Kasi, again, this is a thermodynamic loop. Equal to zero naman siya. So, when you do the manipulations, yung, um, yung pag-transfer nyo from one side to, from left-hand side to right-hand side, always mag-auto-correct mag yung mga uh, signs na yun. Right? Okay? So, ito, you know, um, if you do the itong thermodynamic loop, you assess that, you'll notice na ito, yung part na to, 
uh, if there are no transformations involved, no, kung no transformations involved, it will come back to Kirchhoff's law, which is the same formula kanina, no. So mangyayari is uh etong part na to dito, this is the sensible heat part. And the sensible heat part again, the sensible heat part is the part wherein uh this is the enthalpy associated with uh, a change in the ano no, in in temperature. So kaya naka CPDT siya. Okay? So dito if you combine this all of this equation uh, etong mga ano eto cpc plus cpd minus cpa minus cpb this is actually just delta cp no okay which is the same equation as before etong una na una natin okay so you end up with the the ano no that's the same equation ang ang good thing lang about the thermal loop is for example, yung kanina sinabi ko noon na meron tayong, let's just imagine na, uh, let me erase no. Let's just imagine na si D from 298 to, from 298 to uh, whatever T this is, merong transformation na nangyayari kay D. So from D alpha nagiging D beta siya. That's the same, may ganun no. So kung mara ito, D alpha to, this is now D beta. Okay. So if ganun ang nangyari what ends up happening is at the uh, let's say yung transformation niya uh, let's put some values here no let's say ito is 500 tapos at let's say 350 at 350 nangyayari itong d beta to d alpha So what happens is uh, we can state it this way no so pwedeng ang isulat natin is this is 500 this is uh, 298 and this is in all in kelvin no? so Sinimplify ko na lang. So ito, kunwari sa 350, mayroon tayong na-experience na transformation from alpha to beta. So we can state the loop as uh, something like uh, pupunta siya uh, or increase niya yung temperature hanggang d alpha. Then it transformed to, to d beta. Then from d beta, may sensible heat siya ulit. So pag ganun yung case, um, if it's a straighten out natin siya, parang ganito lang kasi siya. No? Parang siyang D alpha, tapos D beta, D, tapos D beta dito. Parang ganyan. No? So, ganyan siya. So, uh, pag ganyan, if you look at the loop, all of this is positive no? kasi pakiat pa siya lahat. Pero minsan kasi kinukulangan kayo ng space. That's why most students and even myself, I write it this way. no, Na parang akyat, tapos to the right, tapos... Uh, akyat ulit papunta sa ano. So it gets confusing when you have multiple transformations. Ano? Kasi kunwari, D beta, dadaan pa siya sa D gamma. So you'll have another layer. Okay? So pag ganito yung case, um, you need to account for the transformation. So eto yung first dito is, this is a CPD. So my sensible heat ka dito, yung delta H uh, of B alpha. So that is sensible. Dito, delta H uh, from alpha to beta which is a latent heat and delta h uh, beta from 350 to 500 which is again sensible heat so you don't don't nagiging confusing etong enthalpy of reactions no? okay um but again eto i discuss natin sa fgd para hindi kayo masyadong malito no and i think we have also if you look at the examples uh, no sa modules natin you also see na merong mga examples done wherein there are latent heats involved no okay Okay, ito, this is exactly what I explained earlier. No? Um, let's do this. This is a simple one. And uh, sakto, we have 15 minutes left. Maybe we can do walang example where there is uh, wala, walang example. No? Okay. I'll also show you how to use the calculators in solving this. No? Okay, so let's start with ito. Enthalpy of reaction. So calculate the standard heat of formation of PBO uh, from PB and O2 at 227 given the following data. So again, ito, uh, this is a case wherein hindi na, uh, two nine, hindi na 25 degrees Celsius yung kinukuha nating value. So sabi daw, meron tayong given a uh, delta H of formation at standard state. So yung uh, symbol na to, yung 0 or O, states that uh, naka-standard state siya. So this is PBO at 298. Sabi daw is 54.2. Tapos may, mayroon tayong CP values na binigay sa, ano, no, sa for each of the species involved. Okay? 
Um, then we have eto PB plus one half O2 yields PBO. Okay, so uh, the easiest way to do this is to do a thermal loop. No? So, ang gagawin natin, again, uh, but if you want, kung ayaw nyo gawin yung thermal loop, if you feel that it's confusing, as long as you make sure na walang transformations involved, then you can use yung Kirchhoff's law na lang. No? Pero ito, ako, I highly suggest na thermal loop yung gamitin yung class. No? Ito, let's set it up. Thermal loop natin, pakiat lahat. Let's set it up na pakiat lahat. No? Tapos, we... Uh, do a counterclockwise yung positive natin. Again, that's arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. Kayo bahala doon. Okay? So, the thermal loop should be equal to zero. So, um, ito, first natin na dadaanan is this one. This is positive. So, yan. Next is ito, the sensible heat, pataas. That's also positive. Okay, positive. Ito, yung delta H of uh, transformation... Uh, oh, that stage of, of formation at the elevated temperature 500 Kelvin, ito, that is the, uh, the, ano no, yung hinahanap natin. It's at 500, ano, sorry, ito palang symbol na to does not necessarily imply na 290H. It just means that it is a standard na enthalpy of reactions. So, and later, uh, mas mag make sense uh, in the in the other discussions. No? Minsan, uh, interchangeable lang. Minsan, hindi na sinusulat yung standard. Pwedeng diretso F500 lang. There is, I feel like, uh, sa lahat ng na nakita ko mga textbooks and references, no, hindi consistent yung naming niya. Minsan, ganito siya. Stand, delta H of formation at 500. Minsan, delta H, nandito yung F at 500. Uh, minsan din, delta H, no, kunwari, reaction, 500. So, paiba-iba siya. No? So, uh, just don't get confused na lang. If you do get confused, uh, pwede nyo itanong na lang sa, kunwari sa during the exams, hindi nyo alam kung anong ibig sabihin nito. Then we, we can always give you uh, the answer so for that. Kasi again, iba-iba yung notation. Baka iba yung sanay kayo. Okay? So we'll give that consideration to you guys. Okay, so ito. Delta H of uh, formation at 500 yung hinahanap natin and it goes against the loop. That's why negative to. Tapos ito, against yung dalawang to. So that's why two negatives in dito. And ito, remember, always account for the number of moles. So we have one mole lang dito. So goods na tayo sa PBO and PB. Pero one half sa O2, lagay natin yung one half na ano, symbol. Okay? So if you evaluate that, and let's try evaluating this. No? Um, you can combine the ano no. Uh, ito yung the perhaps a, a, a trick na ginagawa or parang tips na ginagawa ng mga students and I, I, I used to do this myself as well no nung, nung dating nag under uh, when when I took this course uh, what they do is they arrange the itong a b and c's na to in a sort of table no para mas madali siyang ano so kumare ang ginagawa nila is a b c so that's uh, 10.6 so this is for PBO, PB, and O2. So ang ginagawa is, ang i-arrange mo siya, 5.63, 7.16. This is 4 times 10 to the negative 3. This is 2.33, 10 to the negative 3. And lastly, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 3. The C is, ito 0, wala siyang C, wala ding C dito. And dito, the, there is 0 0.4. Uh, times 10 to the 5. Okay? Tapos ang ginagawa is you get delta Cp first. So, uh, ang gagawin mo is uh, i-minus mo, i-combine mo lahat. So, ito siya. So, ito yung A, ito yung B, ito yung uh, C. Okay? Uh, ito, hindi pala niya kinumbine pa. Na separate pala niya ginawa. No? So, hiwalay si Cp ni PBO, PB, at Cp ni PB, and Cp ni uh, O2. Pero, kung gusto nyo, ito, I think this is uh, a clever way of doing it, no? Kasi mas mapapadaling nyo siya. So, if I hold my calculator, kunwari, lalabas ako ng calculator, no? Ay, no, sorry. X, uh, Casio. Kunwari ito, Casio. Um, uh, show ba yung calculator? Wait. 
Yan, kita yung calculator, no? So, ang gagawin natin is, uh, pwede tayo mag-input ng values, no? So, for example, uh, so, let's do 10.6. Ah, uh, wait. Ano bang hinahanap natin? Uh, minsan, it's always helpful na gawin yung class is, i-state nyo na dito, no? So, kunwari ito, um, I'll do negative one half sa O2 para kasi alam kong nasa reactant side siya and I'll do negative PB dito. So, ito, minus, ilagyan ko na ng negative sign. Dito, lalagyan ko na rin ng uh, negative one half. Ito, negative one half. Times negative one half. Parang ganyan. Para pag uh, in-evaluate po, uh, mas madali na siya. So, what I end up having here, kung ano man yung makukuha ko dito na terms, ilalagay ko na siya dito sa, uh, ano no, Uh, dito sa dito sa part na to itong sensible heat part okay so um let's try to evaluate this no and uh ito naka-rearrange na siya tama nilipat na yung delta h of formation 500 dun sa left hand side of the equation so negative na wala naging positive na siya and ito puro knowns na to so this is the only unknown and we have all the knowns on the right hand side So what we do is we can actually use our calculator to evaluate this, and most of you probably know already know how to use this now. So you do negative trying to input fifty two four hundred. Okay, so plus, and we do integral sign. No integral sign is here. To. Oh, tayo. Ay na kastat mode pala ko. Okay, go out of the start mode. So again, ulit ko negative 52,400 plus integral and uh, pwede later ko na ilagay yung ano no, pwede rin ngayon. So ilalagay ko ganyan, 298, akyat ako, this is 500. Tapos balik ako dun sa, sa loob. Okay, so dito sa loob, you can also, ano no, and this is Um, in recent times, no, this is uh, the way I I now do it. Hindi ko na siya tinatabulate. Um, ni nilalagay ko na lang siya as is kung paano siya nakastate dito. Uh, taking into account na parang or I I'm, I'm trusting my ability na hindi ko wala akong maling input na nilagay. So yun yung ginagawa ko. Ah, oh. uh, pero dati kasi very cautious pa ako no na parang piko. The more values na in-input mo sa calculator in one line, the more likely na magkakamali ako. So, ginagawa ko is, is sinisimplify ko muna yung A, Bs, and Cs before inputting it here. Pero again, it depends on you guys. No? So, let's just try na hindi natin simplify. No? Diretso natin. Pasok lang. So, ito 10.6 uh, plus 4 times 10 to the negative 3 and meron siyang x value na so alpha x okay so we go minus and ito hindi ko na ipa parenthesis diretso ko na 63 apply ko na lang yung negative on on both uh, terms na so negative 5.63 minus 2.33 exponent negative 3 and alpha x kasi t siya so uh, dito kasi naka dx kasi si ano no calculator so I alpha x yung ilagay nyo. Okay, ito yung alpha x no, alpha x. Tapos minus uh let's do 0.5 times 7.16 minus 0.5 exponent negative -3 alpha x tapos minus and I'll probably do a uh, natural fraction dito para mas madali makita. So I'll do 0.4 exponent 5. Ano oh, sorry. Ah uh, di ko na multiply by 0.5. So sa pang 0.5 times 0.4 exponent 5 Uh, alpha x squared. Tama? Kasi ito is, if you look at it, it's t to the negative 2 kasi. So, alpha x squared yung gagawin ko. 
And we'll trust na wala tayong maling ginawa dyan. We'll just do equals. And hopefully, parang may mali tayong ginawa. Kasi hindi same yung final answer, no? Ah, na plus daw yung last. So, thank you for the correction. Uh, let's find it. Saan tayo nagamali? Uh, we do minus, minus, minus. Seven. Ay, naka-minus naman. Ah, okay. Dapat plus kasi... Uh, minus siya dito so negative times negative okay thank you uh, Calvin no? uh, for noticing that so this should be plus no? and hopefully if we do equals we get the same answer na 51998 okay so yun yun yung downside ng ano no uh, uh, yung yung pag uh, one line lang yung ginawa nyo prone to error talaga siya as you see as you see so earlier no nagkamali ako doon sa last one Part. Pero pwede naman ganito. Um, Kervin asks, uh, nag-work po ba yung store values bawat CP? Then diretso input na lang alongside T and or. Um, I've, I've never tried, ano no, Kervin, yung pag store values. I, actually ako, hindi kasi ako confident sa store values function. No? Hindi ko alam kung paano siya nag-work. Uh, how many values can you store? So, I've never explore, explored it. Pero, pwede sigurong i-try mo, Kervin, using this example, kasi given naman yung final answer, check mo kung same lang yung final answer na lalabas. If so, then probably it works. No? So, unfortunately, wala na tayong time. No? So, uh, I leave it, I leave you guys with this muna. Uh, pero, dun sa, ano, sa FGDs natin, ang gagawin natin is, uh, Yung, yung kulang na lang natin is what happens when we do a thermal loop that involves uh, a transformation change. No? So what if merong transformation change from this range, from 298 to 500, meron palang transformation involved. So yun, i-try natin tingnan kung paano, paano magbabago tong ano, uh, equation natin. And lastly, um, tingnan natin yung equations involving... Uh, AFT no or the adiabatic flame temperatures. Okay? Or or problems pala rather that involves the adiabatic flame temperature. So I highly suggest class no kasi ang schedule natin for let's look at the schedule. We are scheduled for the first FGD on kailan ba yun? FGD is alam ko next week. Eh. FGD is on September 27, no, which is uh, on Tuesday. So I highly encourage na lahat kayo pumunta. If you can, no, punta tayo sa FGD kasi um, marami tayong ano doon. Uh, tapos ma masasanay din kayo sa, ano, sa calculations. Uh, but if you can't do the FGD, hindi naman required ang FGD. No? FGD is mostly... As a sort of ano na rin siya, a review. Kasi on the 29th, mag-e-exam na tayo. So we have 27, 29. Medyo mabilis yung pacing natin ngayon. Pero again, hopefully I, I can see you all sa 27 para ready tayo on the 29th. Okay? Ang requirement lang, uh, uh, I'm sure you've seen the F2F requirements na. So please read the F2F handbook. Tingnan niyo yung lahat ng rules. And uh, hopefully you get excited no, para sa first F2F and Shane seems to be excited. Uh, ako, I'm also excited to see you guys in person as well no? kasi most sa inyo hindi ko pa nakikita. No? Ang nakita ko pa lang in real life is si Ralph, I think Sean I've seen, and si Kervin. Nakinabutan ko kayo f 2 no. Uh, pero most parang uh, wala pa, hindi ko pa ata nakikita. Uh, sir, uh, pagka nasa department na kayo, uh, i-announce ko by the end of the week no kung anong room tayo naka-assign. Uh, but we'll also be posting siguro doon sa bulletin board kung anong room ang ang assigned for our F2F session. No? Pero ang naka, if I remember correctly, we are uh, assigned to MW1 and MW2. Yun yung room na naka-assign sa atin. Pero um, i-double check ko 
kung yun nga ba yung available and uh hopefully i'll see you all on the 27 um unfortunately my meeting ako at 10 o'clock so kailangan kong i-end na tong session so sorry hindi ko na makukuha yung if you have any further questions uh maybe you can address them doon sa fgd na lang natin all right so thank you everyone tapos end ko na yung session